Well, welcome to the Gospel Center Pro Life Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to fight discouragement in pro life ministry. It's something we all deal with, especially when we're dealing with life and death issues. I hope this podcast will be an encouragement to you. Stay tuned. I felt your passion, I've touched your heart. Use me, Lord, use me, Lord. All right. Well, welcome to the Gospel Center Pro Life Podcast. Um, we want to talk a little bit about something that I'm sure all of you deal with. We certainly deal with this, at least, uh, um, you know, maybe, you know, time and again, we deal with discouragement. And that's what we want to talk about, discouragement in pro-life ministry. And we've sort of numbered out some uh, some points, some sources of discouragement that we have um that we've experienced Mm -hmm. and that others have experienced. We have conversations with people, not just in sidewalk counseling, but in other realms of pro-life ministry um, that get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we get discouraged from time to time. We have to encourage each other. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we sort of get a feel for what other people are dealing with. And we find that we're all sort of dealing with some of the same stuff. Right. Um, So we wanted to touch on some of those subjects and some of those sources of discouragement that, that people have in, in hopes that we can encourage people who are listening right. and encourage them to stay in this battle because mm-hmm. it is a battle. And I think that's um, it's not one of the points that we have here, mm-hmm. but it's sort of the overarching principle of this whole thing mm-hmm. is that we're in a spiritual battle. It's not yeah. a battle against uh, the Democrats. It's not mm-hmm. a battle against... Uh, you know, some political entity because it's not a political fight. Mm-hmm. This is a this is a battle, a spiritual battle against mm-hmm. forces of darkness, mm-hmm. and we have to understand that whether we're doing pro life ministry and you know gospel centered pro life ministry, or we'll, whether we're doing you know handing out tracts or or pastors in the pulpit or whatever realm of ministry, missionaries mm-hmm. um, have to build have to battle with discouragement. I mean, any work that you do, um, even if you're a non believer, you can deal with discouragement. But as believers, we have a certain, you know, a sort, certain enemy that's against us that brings a whole other level of discouragement and just, you know, mm-hmm. lies that we believe and things like that. So, um, so yeah, let's touch on this yeah. subject. And, and we hope that you guys, we prayed mm-hmm. just before this podcast because <laughs> um, we had a little discouragement <laughs> with, the, with the audio stuff that we were dealing right. with. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, we, we prayed and, and that's... Because we know we're in a spiritual battle. <laughs> That's right. right. And I, th- I wonder if the spiritual battle, you know, this is the major ministry I've been involved in. I've been in other ministries before. But, but in this one, you are, um, you're attacking what Satan probably most wants to destroy. No, we're not attacking. We're attacking his stronghold on Satan's stronghold, on the area that he most wants to destroy, which is the family, which yeah. is the bedrock of any nation, any community. Um, and and if you can, you know, destroy the idea that a mother should always protect her child, you know, you go a long ways, I think, towards destroying the fabric of the family. So I think if I weren't engaged in a spiritual battle when I am engaged in pro-life activity, um, or if I wasn't facing the... Um, Satan's arrows, which of which discouragement is one. Maybe I'm not doing a very good job. Yeah, I think sometimes discouragement might tell you you're doing something that is angering the enemy of your soul, yeah. and he's attacking. Yeah, and that, even know, sometimes that alone, I think, can be encouraging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Take, take what's meant to be a discouragement and yeah. let the Lord turn around yeah. to an encouragement. Right. You know, one of the things that I've said, and I've heard others say it too, so it's not original to me, but. Abortion is the devil's pride and joy. Mm-hmm. This thing is like something that, that you know, if you look at um, sort of the proponents of this this pro-abortion agenda and some of the, the energy that's behind that, but also some of the, the verbiage and language that's behind that, it's just like, man, this is satanic. Mm-hmm. This is sure something is. That, that's obviously a spiritual stronghold. It's a spiritual stronghold in our nation, I believe, much like, you know, in, when you read, Jeremiah, for example, and the children of Israel, a spiritual stronghold is, you know, the idols that they were giving themselves to, turning away from God yeah. and turning to idols and sacrificing their children. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's nothing new under the sun. The same thing right. is happening in our country and, and nations across the earth. Right. Um, right. Because, again, this is, a, this is a spiritual battle. Yeah, yeah. And you face, uh, you know, I, 
this morning I was listening to Albert Moeller, I mm -hmm. think is, is and, and he was talking about how um, whenever um, legislation, particularly liberal legislation, cannot be passed that, um, by through the channels it's supposed to be passed through, which is the legislative branch of the government, the Supreme Court um, passes like in um, marriage, uh, the marriage issue and yeah. abortion yeah. issue. And, um, and so sometimes when you read the news and think about that, you know, the things that were uh, in, put in by our founding fathers to protect us yeah. um, are, they're not protecting right, us yeah. because they're, they're, they're being, being ignored. To, yeah. They're being used to, for this agenda that is um, an anti-God um, agenda. Yeah. And so reading the news even, I was thinking this morning, you know, I, I want to be informed. I, I do believe we should be informed. But it is increasingly depressing yeah. and discouraging because it feels like the pro-death agenda is winning. Yeah, and that's sort of our, our first point. When we yeah. see in the news, you know, I, I, just, I call it the bad news. <laughs> I'll, I'll listen to the bad news for a little bit because it, all it is is a bunch of bad news. And uh, that stuff bombards our minds and, mm -hmm. and we get, you know, we get discouraged. We get hopeless in a sense. We're like, yeah. man, the world is going, you know, for lack of a better term, to hell in a handbasket. That's right. And what can we do about it, you know? Yeah. And you, you see more and more of this culture of death sort of surrounding us and, and sort of closing in. Mm -hmm. And it seems, if you didn't know the Lord, mm -hmm. like it's hopeless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Even even things that tie into abortion, which is the um, sexual freedom, and, mm -hmm. and that sexual immorality is is laughed at yeah, sort the, of the, the norm. idea that 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 we should be talking about abstinence for example um is is laughed at yeah um and that can be so discouraging because we who are out there on the front lines of of the um the abortion uh, um you know discussion where they're in front of abortion centers and we see, I don't know, 90% of the abortions are a result of sexual immorality. Yeah. So we under we know it is critical to if we're ever going to be effective as, as a nation, as a world in ending abortion, that has to be addressed. But the news, all, all the events in the world, are they, they make fun of people who talk about sexual purity, um, and, and so how do we deal with that, Daniel? How do we deal with, with reading and wanting to be informed as I think we should be? Yeah. And facing, like you said, the bad news that is so discouraging. Yeah. I mean, I know the temptation for me is just to completely ignore the news. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. not listen or watch the news. And I don't really watch. I listen if I get any news that's on the radio or, or even Facebook. Um, and, you know, it keeps scrolling as you see something on Facebook, like this latest whatever that's come out, you know, mm -hmm. pro-abortion agenda moving forward in some area or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like keep scrolling. Um, in one sense, you know, we, we need to be in the loop. We need to not just be in the dark when people mention stuff that's happened in the, right. in the news. Right. Um, but one of the things I think that we we obviously we have to do is we have to be in the Word. Absolutely. We have to be in God's yeah. Word. We have to be in God's Word consistently. If yeah. we're consuming news and, and the news outlets, even if it's Fox News or whatever mm -hmm. other news outlet that we're consuming, um, and we have a focus and our minds go there more than in the Word of God, mm -hmm. maybe it will be just a good idea just to cut that stuff off, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. to not allow the, the news of the world to bombard our minds. I've right. had seasons where I've just completely yeah. cut it off completely yeah. don't don't listen I, i'm gonna I, I listen to npr believe it or not oh wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it frustrates me and it yeah. makes me angry yeah because it's it's very left leaning it is yeah. and uh and you know what sometimes i just cut the stuff off mm -hmm. i'll go a week without listening to the news mm -hmm. and you know even though we do need to be in the loop i think mm -hmm. in some sense we don't need to know everything mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and uh and i think this this desire for uh, to know everything can be a trap for us, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the scriptures that you had, you know, we made up a little list of some of the things that we wanted to touch on is Romans 12, too. Yeah, great scripture. Do not be conformed to this world, but be mm -hmm. transformed by the renewal of your mind, mm -hmm. that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Mm -hmm. And we renew our minds by being in the Word of God. We do not renew our minds by being on Facebook we don't renew our minds by being watching Fox News, you know, 
four or five hours a day or whatever, listening to the radio. We renew our mind by being in, in the Word of God, by being um, consistently in the Word of God. I think in our personal devotion time, we need mm-hmm. to be in the Word of God. But, you know, as we're going down the road even, there's so many apps out there where you can get the Word of God and have it playing over your radio or whatever. Yep. Just having our minds renewed by the Word of God is a key. And not being conformed to this world. You know, left leaning or right leaning or whatever news outlets and all these things ultimately these are sources from the world Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and you're not going to get comfort from fox news you're not going to get comfort from these other you know news outlets that might agree with your political persuasion um because again it's just bad news you know it's just people throwing bombs at each other in in the sense that you know these just political attacks and and your mind gets bombarded with political and 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 political rhetoric and, and the politics that are surrounding the issue of abortion rather than keeping your mind focused on this is a spiritual battle, this is a gospel issue. That's so important. And I I don't know about you, but it is easy for me to throw away two, three hours scrolling through Facebook. Mm -hmm. Or I'm I'm not a big news watcher. I don't watch television, but scrolling through news reports online or whatever. And, um, it, I think that's one of Satan's traps. In Instead of opening up our Bibles and dwelling on the Word, we're dwelling on these things of which will ultimately never save yeah. and, um, and I think bring us down and do add to the discouragement. And I hear over and over again from, um, from women who are at the abortion center or are contemplating abortion that they... Uh, no longer can pray or they no longer can read their Bible or they haven't been reading their Bible yeah. or they haven't been going to church. It, it always seems to be there's this distancing from God, whether that's first or as a result of that they're already in sin, I don't know. But um, but I, if, if it's that distancing from God that is leading them into these terrible choices, obviously then the dwelling again back with God is the antidote yeah. and what Satan would least want us to do. Yeah. I know one of the encouragements I give, I give it to our volunteers. I give it to anybody I can. And it's three things, which is stay in the word, yes. stay in prayer mm-hmm. and stay in church. Right. Um, we need to be surrounded. You know, Paul says that we should encourage one another daily Mm-hmm. as long as it's called today. So we right. need to be encouraging each other. You know, to encourage somebody is to take the courage that you have and put it into them. You're right. encouraging, you're instilling right. courage in that person. Yeah. And so, you know, an important aspect, rather than just being surrounded by the news or being surrounded by um, even, you know, with us, we're dealing on a regular basis with pro-abortion people. Right. And, and their yeah. arguments and their the things that they yeah. say will kind of swirl around in my head. Mm-hmm. And, you know, being surrounded by that stuff mm-hmm. and, and feeling like you have to give an answer for all that stuff all the time mm-hmm. is, is it just, it's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just need to empty your, your thoughts of, of the arguments against um, mm-hmm. the pro-life position and against Christianity or whatever mm-hmm. and just say, you know what, the Word of God says this and standing on the Word of God is is the key. Right. You, can't, you can't answer everybody's questions. You can't be the source of... Of, uh, of information and, and what is truth for everybody, because some people right. are just not going to be satisfied, mm-hmm. you know? But the positive of that, which at least I've experienced, is if, if there are things thrown at me that, yes, they can be discouraging and they make you think, oh, m- maybe I'm wrong, but it can also spur you on and should spur you on yeah. to, to go back into the Word and to examine um, – very carefully what God has to say and the the source of the hope that we have, uh, you know, rekindle that w- yeah. within us. And I think that that's a, the positive thing to do with, with the terrible things that uh, the, the so-called pro-choice people throw at us. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, another huge discouragement, which we're experiencing personally now, is um, Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. Huge giant. Talk about a giant. And the oh, Bible yeah. talks about giants um, and how do we slay the giants in life. Well, this is a giant yeah. in the so-called pro-choice, certainly abortion world, is is Planned Parenthood. And they're coming to Charlotte. Now, they've yeah. been in Charlotte, but not in, um, in a very small capacity and not in the uh, abortion capacity. And, and they're coming with... 
an abor- new abortion center, and which opened. It's open, but I guess they'll yeah. be starting abortion soon. So, you know that um, it's kind of always in the back of my mind. There's already three abortion centers that were spreading our, ourselves thin with with volunteers trying to cover, and now this fourth, and this fourth one is the giant Planned Parenthood. So and. God clearly talks about how we respond to the giants in in our life. So, so maybe d- being discouraged is not the proper <laughs> response. Yeah. Maybe there's a more godly way to yeah. deal with that giant. Well, I mean, th- we, so certainly, you know, David wasn't in denial, right? David right. didn't look at Goliath and say, you know, he's just a tiny little thing. He he knew this guy was a giant. Yeah. And we see in our culture, we see in America the Planned Parenthood giant, but the abortion giant and, mm-hmm. and ultimately the, the political, the, you know, the, poli- the politics of abortion and all that stuff is a big giant. It's a sort of a mountain yeah. that, that we have to face. And they, there's a lot of money, you know, Planned Parenthood, just as an example, I think it, it's of course worldwide, the abortion giant is a political entity with, I mean, tens of millions of dollars. I think I, I heard on the news yesterday that they're going to put um, Sixty million dollars into, um, I know North Carolina was one of the states, but uh, some of these battleground states, they're going to pour, you know, just as one entity. And this is only one entity that's going to be doing. There's going to be a lot of other ones that are pouring. They're pouring fifty or sixty million dollars into these states, these battleground mm-hmm, states, mm-hmm. and uh, in order to get their you know Democrat person elected. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like that just shows you this political thing like cities for life could never pour you know any money into in into a political campaign right. nor would we right but right. uh but this thing has you know a political wing to it it's got of course their abortion wing where they do abortions it's got their outreach wing where they're it's going the media. into the, it's the, got media the media is totally yeah. behind them yeah i mean even if you read some of the stories about the uh exposing of planned parenthood and the trial that's going on in california it's like, man, these people have got lawyers. They've got all this, and this is a giant. And coming yeah. to coming to Charlotte, it certainly, um, I believe, already had an influence in the city council with the new sound ordinance that's been mm-hmm. passed here in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it looks like they're going to have even more uh, clout in the city council. And who knows what sort of persuasion they'll they'll have with the city council and trying to make you know probably ultimately some kind of buffer zone or something like that. Um, and however, all we got is a slingshot, <laughs> yeah. Daniel. Right? And all we have is a slingshot <laughs> and, and five stones. Right. But the encouragement is, and I think that story is a cute little story, David and Goliath. You know, but it's actually a violent story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we're not people. We're not a people of violence at all. Right. We have a code of conduct. We have a code that, of conduct that, that, that says, says we says absolutely we are yeah. peaceful, no violence. Right. But spiritually speaking, yeah, because this is a spiritual example for us. David was merciless to that giant. He slew yeah. that giant. He had mm-hmm. confidence in God. Mm-hmm. He took the giant's head off and held it up for everybody to see. Mm-hmm. Killed him with his own sword. <laughs> That is a miraculous event. Mm-hmm. That that could not be orchestrated by man. Mm-hmm. That event, David slaying Goliath, is not something that David, you know, certainly God trained him in the wilderness. You know, he, he slayed a bear and a lion, and he, he talks about how God had, had trained him in one sense in, in, in the wilderness. But he wasn't out, you know, lifting iron and, and getting ready for the giant. He just sort right. of came upon this thing. You yeah. know, it sort of came upon him in a sense. Yeah. Um, but he was ready, and he was confident and here's the point. He was not confident in himself, in mm-hmm. his own ability. He was confident in the Lord. He says, the Lord will deliver this uncircumcised Philistine into my hand. Amen. And so when we when we face giants like yeah. Planned Parenthood, like the abortion industry mm-hmm. and all of that, we have to have this confidence in the Lord. We, we, we get off track when we have the confidence in ourselves. You know, we've, yeah. we've learned a lot. Yeah. We, I think we do good in sidewalk counseling. I think we mm-hmm. do well enough to where we can teach others, you know, mm-hmm. with the with the Sidewalks for Life site. I think we're doing good and putting content out there. Right. But it's not a confidence in ourselves. It's things that we've learned by making mistakes and in prayer and seeking the Lord. Mm-hmm. How can we do better? Because mm-hmm. we certainly made a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. Our confidence has to be in, in the Lord, mm-hmm. in, in whatever, you know, not just sidewalk counseling, but, you know, pregnancy centers, if you're reaching out in that way, or... And maybe even politically, if you're involved mm-hmm. in some political pro-life organization mm-hmm. or, or 
campus outreach in a, in a political or in a, in a, um, in a pro-life realm, yeah. reaching out at campuses or whatever. Yeah. Um, we have to have confidence in the Lord. And this is why I believe that if we're going to, if we're going to fight this pro-abortion giant, this, the pro-abortion agenda, um, we can't do it just from a secular perspective. Right. It's, it's a spiritual battle. We've got to be in the Word, and we've got to use the Word of God, and we've got to be in prayer asking God for wisdom. And He can turn things around in the most amazing way. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, look at the story with the sound ordinance. I mean, mm-hmm. that really is a great example of us facing what looked like a huge discouragement, right? We, yeah. we had lost, um, seemingly, against the political forces of, <laughs> I won't say of evil, but that is what I believe, yeah. um, and, and lost the ability to use our amplified sound in front of abortion centers. And that was a, such a great tool for us. Yeah. And we thought... Oh, this is terrible. But God turned it around where, well, no one can use amplified sound, yeah. including, therefore, the pro-choice people. And they could no longer drown our voices out yeah. um, with their little radios and, and sound systems they tucked under the umbrella. And we found that we had an increased ability to reach the women. Who would have ever suspected that? Yeah. How, how God can turn things that you just would never expect yeah well i mean the picture of that is you know david slaying goliath with his own sword or or chopping his head off with his own sword it's like the the instrument that he was going to use to destroy david david actually uses to to finish him yeah happens in the book of esther with haman where haman wants to destroy mordecai and and hates mordecai the jew and and um and plots to do so and even erects the scaffold that he's going to end up hanging his Mm -hmm. enemy mordecai and then through a series of read the book if you haven't read the book of Esther it's a great book but through a series of amazing events God turns that completely around and Haman ends up being hung from his own gallows God does that over and over again yeah now, so just so there's no mistake in here, we're not talking about physical violence. We're Absolutely. talking about a spiritual battle that we're yes. in. And that's something we always have to keep before our eyes because there can be with people, when you get so frustrated and you're facing this giant, there can be, um, out of that frustration, this just natural anger. Yeah. But the Bible tells us that the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Mm-hmm. So if we're just angry, and that's why we encourage our, our volunteers and encourage each other too mm-hmm. on a regular basis is this is this is a spiritual battle, not a natural battle. And our driving force cannot be hatred. Even right. as evil as abortion is right. and evil as the abortion agenda is and evil as Planned Parenthood is, we cannot be driven by hatred for those things. Um we, we certainly should hate evil, mm-hmm. but we're not called to hate people. We're That's called right. to, to ultimately proclaim the gospel and our desires that people come into the kingdom right. of God. Right. Um, and, yeah. and there have been, locally here, we've seen abortion workers come mm-hmm. uh, come to know the Lord and, mm-hmm. and come out of the industry. Of course, nationally, we know there are people like Abby Johnson and mm-hmm. other people that were in Planned Parenthood that have come out. Mm-hmm. And so, so God's doing a work there yeah. in this giant. And ultimately, you know... I, I, I don't know how it's going to play out, right. but the Lord somehow has uh, has Davids, and uh, and and they're all over the United States of America, yeah. as there are giants all over. Yeah. And God's going to turn this thing around, and God's going yeah. to use what the enemy meant for evil and turn it around for good. Yeah. And I, you know, just sort of a, an example of that is with the uh, the trial that's going on from the uh, David Delia is mm-hmm. the guy's name who did the exposing of Planned Parenthood and they're selling baby parts and all of that. Well, as they're going through, he's on trial right. for for whatever law he supposedly violated, right. um, like privacy law mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, what's it called? Wiretap? I think something like I that. I think they're that's doing, what yeah. They, yeah. And, but in that trial, it's like what Planned Parenthood is doing and actually selling baby parts and, and, and all the things that they are doing behind the scenes, all that's coming out too. It's being further exposed. Yeah. Exactly. It's so coming it's to like, light. Okay. Yeah. So that, that just reminds us, keep our focus on the Lord. That's right. Keep our eyes fixed on Him. And ultimately, we put our trust in Him and God's going God's gonna to be glorified. Right, right. This thing. And sometimes you do feel all alone. You said, you know, there, you, you feel like you're, you're just David standing there alone yeah. against the giant. And I know um, for me, you know, um, 
sometimes I'm discouraged because I'm sitting in church and and there's discussions about um, all kinds of, of groups that we should be helping and how we as Christians need to be addressing, but I, I so rarely hear abortion yeah. mentioned and 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 so sometimes those in or or even you'll you'll see other pro-life groups um put down um or or other christians put down those who who are very active on the front lines of of the um the pro-life movement like like us on the sidewalk as yeah. as know that you should not be doing that and you can really feel i think if you're if you're active in the pro-life movement i think you can feel isolated even yeah. from who you expect to be supportive yeah. fellow christians and um you know we're sitting in church and wondering why isn't there more being said from the pulpit and and i think that that for me personally that that has been a source of discouragement yeah just wondering where is it where is where are all these people who claim to love the lord yeah and, and the lord i think just is so clear in calling us to protect those who cannot protect themselves who can't speak for themselves who are vulnerable who are being led away to death why aren't Christians there in droves um, speaking out against this um, this terrible evil? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, certainly I believe that we're dealing with the number one moral issue of our day. I totally abortion. agree, yeah. And you wonder, you're in church, and, and mm-hmm. the pastor addresses this thing, and addresses mm-hmm. that thing. There's a lot of injustices going on. There's no right, doubt about sure. it. There's, you know, Abortion is not the only issue that the church is to deal with. Mm-hmm. We're first and foremost supposed to advance the kingdom of God and proclaim the right, gospel. Right. And, of course, that's what we do on the mm-hmm. sidewalks. We're proclaiming mm-hmm. the gospel. We're, we're trying to uh, call people to come and put their trust in the Lord, mm-hmm. not, not just, a quote, just saving babies. Right. Um, but if we're dealing with the number one moral issue of the day and it's not being addressed from the pulpit, that can be a source of discouragement, mm-hmm. especially when you're you're passionate about this this issue of abortion um, because you have some connection to it or just the Lord stirred your heart. When you're passionate about something and you're looking around and you're seeing other people that are not passionate about this thing, yeah. it can be discouraging. Yeah. And you, you, you can start to get disillusioned. Yeah. You know, disillusionment, I, I have over the years observed uh, a great amount of disillusionment from people who are involved, especially in reaching out at abortion clinics, doing right. sidewalk counseling, yeah. disillusionment with the church because where is the church? Disillusionment with their pastor because he doesn't talk about the issue of abortion. And you know, one of the things that we have to understand, and, and one of the things I remind myself is, I wasn't always in this battle either. Right. You know, I, if you've only been in, in pro life ministry for a couple of years. And, you know, I've been in pro-life ministry, you know, for 15 years. But before that, you know, I was a believer and and believed abortion was wrong, but I was not involved in this level. You know, you you need to give other people the same grace that Mm -hmm. that you want them to give you, Mm -hmm. first and foremost. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, Another thing is, too, you know, there's genuinely there are people who just don't understand. They just don't know the gravity of the problem. They, you know, I talk to Christians that have lived in Charlotte their whole life. And they have no clue that there's an abortion clinic. Right. Actually, I was just over the window of an abortion clinic today, mm-hmm. and a young lady stopped on her way out. And she wrote on her window, she saw my sign, and it was a picture of a baby that was saved from abortion. Mm-hmm. And she was like, that happens here? She said, I didn't think they even had those anymore, <laughs> talking about abortion clinics. I said, yeah, it happens right in this building right here. Wow. And she was surprised. Yeah. Um, so, you know, give people grace. Give people, yeah. you know, the, the, the same grace that you want to that you want to be given to you. Yeah, that's true. It's true. I've, I've had so many new volunteers that as they stand and when they watch the women streaming into the abortion clinic, um, they say, I had no idea. It's one thing to hear about it, but to see it, it, it you understand this is a much bigger problem yeah. than, than, I, than I thought. So, um, so what's, uh, you know, I've, I've got a verse that, um, that to me really spoke to this very issue, Romans 11, 1 to 5. Um, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people who he foreknew. Do you know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he appeals to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets, they have demolished your altars, and I alone am left. And they seek my life. I always, I've always related to that cry because mm-hmm. sometimes you do feel all alone. Yeah. 
And um, but you what get is the Elijah mentality? The Eli- is it called that? There's an <laughs> well, official. <laughs> they, 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 I've heard it called that actually, okay. and, and I've heard messages about that very thing because okay. you feel like, especially when you're in a battle um, that's this heated, intense, and yeah. this intense. It's like, man, I'm the only person fighting this battle. Yeah, yeah, uh, which is incredibly discouraging when you're solitary, when you're, you feel alone. There's no yeah. one here helping me. But God's reply to him, I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So, too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by yeah. grace. There are people. They, that that are with you yeah. in in this battle, and you're yeah, not Yeah, I mean, alone. even, too, you know, we, we do have to understand that pro-life ministry, even though I believe this is the number one moral issue of our day in our country, yeah. certainly is, not everybody is. You know, this, is a, this is a cop-out for a lot of people. I'm not called to that. But right. genuinely, yeah. not everybody is called right. to be on the front lines. Right. There are those who are called to be missionaries in other countries. There are mm-hmm. those who are called to do other things. Mm-hmm. Now, certainly, I believe that there are more people that are actually called to be on the front lines than are out there, certainly. Yeah. But, you know, over the years, when I first started coming out to the Latrobe Abortion Clinic you know, 15 years ago, 14, almost 15 years ago, mm-hmm. there was a handful of Christians out there. Yeah. And there have been times where it would just be me and, and one other guy. Right. Um, I'm sure there would be times whenever, you know, I wasn't able to make it and there would just be you know, one or two people out there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I started to wonder, like, there are all these churches, 1,300 churches in the greater Charlotte area. Where are these people? Yeah. And by God's grace, though, just kind of maintaining and, and, and just saying, you know what? Like Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We have to make right. a decision. We can't, we can't do right for everybody else. We can't make people do right. We can't nag people into doing right, right as or only as do is. right if we have a whole group of and, people and only do right, right when everybody us, else is right, with us right. doing right no yeah. we have to decide you know what as for me and my house right. we will serve the lord we're going to do this work and then god if 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 he so chooses and if people surrender to to his will god will bring people along and god certainly did you know cities for life yeah. came along um and uh, love know, life love then life ultimately yeah. comes along to the point where you know, the first love life, the, the final prayer walk of the first year that they did it, there were 4,000 Christians there. I at, remember we weeped. Clinic. We yeah. weeped. It's like, oh, man. here they I are. Was, I started bawling. I went up on the stage and yeah. looked out across that crowd. I was supposed to share Amazing. a little quick word or something. Right. And I was like, I just went down on my knees and just yeah. wept. Like, right. God, this is this has taken, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. But you're doing a work and God's yeah. you know, doing a work. God's doing a work not just, you know, here in Charlotte. God's doing a work around the country. Yeah. We have to do the best we can to, to see the good. Yeah. And, you know, as far as you pastors are concerned, you, maybe you're in a church and your pastor doesn't ever address the issue of abortion. Um, and, you know, it, it might be time to, to address your pastor on that and to talk yeah. to him and be like, yeah. hey, this is, yeah. I believe, one of the, the, the number one, if not the number one moral issue of our day. Right. Why aren't you talking about this? Yeah. And yeah. if you get an answer... Where you know it's just like, well, this is this is just a political issue. Mm-hmm. Then of course you know with grace answer that and and, and talk to that. Um, but you can't be in in a congregation where a pastor is going to be in a sense opposing what you're what you're doing. You're doing the work of God. It might be time to seek the Lord and find another place to get yeah. plugged into. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, I would say that would that would be my last uh, sort of last thing I would do. I would want to talk to the pastor first and see why he's not addressing this issue. Yeah. You know, a lot of pastors are just, I don't know, I don't know if scared is the right word, but you know, they're, a pastor's heart is a shepherd's heart. Mm-hmm. He wants to shepherd his people. Mm-hmm. He don't want to beat them over the head with, a, with his shepherd's crook. He wants to lead them and, and to guide them. Mm-hmm. And some pastors know they have post-abortive women in their congregation, yeah. and they don't want to hit this issue hard because they don't want these women to feel like, you know, they're they're not Christians or they've done the worst thing possible. I mean, it's terrible, but it's not the unforgivable sin. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, you know, understanding where your pastor is coming from and that is helpful. Um, of course, we know that the best thing that a pastor can do is he, if he has a post abortive woman in his congregation, more than likely has more than he one, is, he has right, multiple, exactly. yeah. in accordance to, to statistics, is to address the issue of abortion. Yeah address the issue of abortion with grace Mm -hmm. but with truth because Mm -hmm. a person doesn't get healing until they first acknowledge they have a disease right you know right 
Yeah, I, I think you raised, um, again, uh, another really important point, and that kind of takes me to another issue of discouragement when you said they um, – they don't want to offend, rightly so, to some degree. We don't want to offend, not purposely, um, because if 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 a pastor offends this whole group of post-abortive women and they leave, well, then what for them? They need the church. Yeah. So it's a. I understand there's a balance yeah. in how you address difficult social issues, but. The flip side of that, which is the source of discouragement, is we hear all the time that we're not tolerant or that we're judgmental. And um, and tolerance is like the, the, I think I called it the anthem of our times. Yeah, Being it is. Being tolerant <laughs> be. is more important than, um, than any absolute standard of right or wrong. And to me, I will sometimes be on that sidewalk and and speaking with um with what I know, I know it's true. And these people coming back at me, you're just being judgmental. You're just intolerant when what I'm saying is first of all based on scripture, but but that a mother shouldn't kill her baby. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like how can this even be a point of contention? Yeah. So, um, well, you know, one of the things I'll say, just going from the last point about sort of feeling isolated in the church context, you know, I will say this, and I'll stress this uh, every time I get the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Every Christian needs to be in church, needs to be in the, within the accountability of a local church under yes. godly leadership yes. and all of that. Yeah. Um, but there is in, in the modern church, and in the world, of course, this idea that the worst thing we could possibly do is be judgmental. And the yeah. worst way that we can carry ourselves is to be perceived as, as judgmental, which is ridiculous, right? When people, when we're dealing with the number one moral issue of our day, when people are literally dying, mm-hmm. to worry about the, the world's perception, I think that's, that's some of the fear that some pastors have is they don't want to be, be perceived by the world as being judgmental. Right. We're going to be inviting. Mm-hmm. We're going to be perceived as tolerant. Mm-hmm. But the scripture doesn't give us the ability to tolerate things that God does not tolerate. God does That's not right. tolerate sin. God does not yeah. tolerate. In, in the word tolerance, you know, you can play with that word. We need to be, I don't even know, I don't even like the word tolerant. But we need to be understanding of people. Mm -hmm. We need to meet people where they're at. Paul Mm -hmm. says, you know, I've I've become all things to all people. Basically, he's saying, I meet people where they're at. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mean he compromised truth, but he met people where they were Mm -hmm. at. And we need to meet people where they're at. Certainly, you know, I've I've heard people, you know, pastors say or or Christians say, I don't want, you know, I don't want any homosexuals in my church. You know, Mm -hmm. if a homosexual comes in my church, I'll disinvite them. I'm like, no, you want them in your mm-hmm. church to hear the mm-hmm. truth. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to allow them to be playing on the on the worship team. I'm not mm-hmm. going to invite them into membership until mm-hmm. they've turned from their sin and put their trust in Jesus. Mm-hmm. But we certainly want to be tolerant of people. We want to, you know, in the sense that we meet them where they're at. We hear what their concerns are. We hear what their struggles are. I actually enjoy on a regular basis talking to the pro-abortion people in front mm-hmm. of the, the abortion clinic and, mm-hmm. and hearing their their struggles and hearing their life stories and hearing how they came to the conclusion right. that they came to, yeah. actually listening to yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, we, we have to understand that as believers, we are called to make judgments mm-hmm. about behavior. Mm-hmm. If we look at abortion and the destructive nature of abortion, we're not judgmental in saying, this thing is destructive, it's sinful, and it's wrong. Mm-hmm. We're not judgmental in the sense where we're writing people off. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're not intolerant as far as of the people. We're just looking at behavior, and we're saying this behavior is 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 wrong. I, I wrote down some verses that um, that speak to to what you just said. First uh, Corinthians six two to three yeah. is a great one, right? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is and who are the saints? Us. Yeah. The the people who have claimed Jesus as Lord. And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more than matters pertaining to this life? So you know, God tells us we're we we are to judge, and we and He has prepared us to yeah. judge, and our judgment is based on um, 
on scripture mm-hmm. and on the Holy Spirit within us that that will guide us in, into all righteousness. We know right from wrong. I just heard a news report about um, I can't remember what Native American tribe it was, Mayan or Incan, one one of those from, um, and I, I honestly don't remember, but uh, they they had just found um, a burial site of thousands of infants sacrificed to um, the false god um, in in response to the natural weather disasters of the time is oh, what yeah. they said and um and I, I I cried as I was listening to this and picturing it they described this burial site and they described the they there were footprints which were in the um, in the rock that had been fossilized yeah. of parents apparent footprints large footprints and little footprints so they were literally walking these these babies to well i don't know if they were babies but infants young yeah. young people yeah. to to be sacrificed and then there was evidence in the skeletal structure of these of the the remains that they found that um the way that the ribs had been wrenched open, that they had been attempting to pull out the heart. And I have read of living children as a sacrifice to the gods. I think you take that to any so-called pro-choice person, and you say, is this right or is this wrong? Yeah. Is there anyone, except an absolute sociopath, that would say, this is right, this is okay, this is their choice. Yeah, it's so, their culture, you know. It's like, and it was, it was right. their culture. And and I wondered, did anyone stand up? Yeah. Did anyone stand up and say, this is wrong? Um, and that's how I feel now. We need we need to be those who who, despite all the lies and deceptions of the so-called pro-choice movement, say. A mother should not kill her baby. I know that to be right. We all know that to be right. And we rationalize and justify um, evil and wrong. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, with that whole idea of don't be judgmental and don't be intolerant. It's like the whole thing. We're asking people not to kill their children. And the whole thing is turned around like the evil ones are the people that are asking for the moms not to kill their children exactly. and asking for society to to repent of this this embracing of evil exactly yes, exactly this is like um just one of the prophets i believe is jeremiah woe to you who call good evil and evil good mm-hmm. it's like it's the, this thing is turned on its mm-hmm. head yeah just this morning one of the so-called pro-choice people um <clears throat> turned to one of the other people who are out there who actually is not with cities for life but but said here you are another day of harassment coming up and i said do you not have compassion on these babies? Yeah. And and um, do you not see this? This is not harassment. This is speaking up out of compassion for those unborn babies. And then it turned into the argument they were not a baby, which is you know, we don't need to get into that sure. right now. But, um, but uh, you know, an- another. Um, Another huge, huge source of, of discouragement, which I think we've kind of alluded to, is so we're out there, and many people in, in all walks of the pro-life movement and all facets of it, yeah. sharing biblical truth, sharing human development truth, which we we know now so yeah. much more than, than when Roe v. Wade was, um, was passed by the Supreme Court. Um, and and we personally, as sidewalk counselors, even go another step and offer resources to these women, and they still choose death. Yeah. We've done all we know to do. Yeah. And they still choose death. Yeah, I mean, that's, man, that's that's tough. We've I've literally seen, we've had in ministry, you know, I'm, one story in particular, a mom of a uh, 18-week-old baby who was on the RV, and... I don't know if you were one of the counselors. Uh, I, I don't recall exactly who was the counselor, yeah. but they were on the, the Mo ultrasound unit right in front of the abortion clinic and saw their baby on the ultrasound and then stepped right off that RV and went right into that abortion clinic and, and killed that 18-week-old baby. And, an 18 and it, week everything old was baby. visible. I mean, oh. at 18 weeks, you know, you can find out whether it's a boy or a girl yeah. and all of that. And it's like, man, they poured everything in. To this young lady showed her all the resources that are available like there is no good reason for you to go in there and and kill your child and she did 
We and, have counselors yeah. when they'll say, you going to raise my baby? And we have a counselor just this past week, right, yeah. that, that yeah. said, yes, yes, I, yes, will, I will. Actually, yeah. And, and, the, and, 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 yet, and still, and yet, yet they choose. people will go and, and have abortions. Right. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to people have to make, you know, have to, they have to make the decision. Hey, you talk about pro-choice. We can't, literally can't force them to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, we have at our disposal the power of persuasion, mm-hmm. and I believe God's Word and the resources and the things that we offer, human development, all those things are, are, are what we use within that power of persuasion. But ultimately, it's between that mom and the Lord right. what she does. Yeah. We can't force her to do the right thing. Now, we want to do everything we can, and we're not justifying abortion, and we're not offering abortion, of course, as an option, laying out your available options here. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is, I was speaking to a the other day about um, about this very thing. She was coming out of the abortion clinic, and, and she was trying to justify abortion and all of this. And, you know, she talked about, you know, how we don't stand against um, uh, the death penalty and all these things. She was going, right, going right. Uh, yeah, you know, kind yeah. of around the loop there. And she said, women have a right to choose to do what they want, even mm-hmm. if you think it's wrong. And, you know, God gives us what she said. She said, God gives people the right to choose. Yes, I said, the reality is you are correct about that. Mm-hmm. A mother of a three-year-old has a right to choose before the Lord. And I don't mean right like legally, but I mean like God gives her the free will to choose. She could slit that three-year-old sir, mm-hmm. if she wants to. Could she choose to do that? Mm-hmm. Yes, she could choose to do that. Right. She's going to suffer the consequences. Mm-hmm. Some people use this, this idea that we have this, this freedom to choose, this free will, as like, okay, well, since God has given me free will, therefore he's okay with everything that I choose to do with that free will. Right. No, right. not at all. Right. As a matter of fact, the things that you do out of your own volition are the things that you're going to be held accountable before, uh, before the Lord for. Mm-hmm. So a mother that chooses to kill her three-year-old or a mother that chooses to kill her you know, three-month-old in the womb right. is going to be accountable to God. Yes, She's not been given you know, under God's law. God's law clearly says, the sixth commandment, you shall not murder. Yeah. Right, so God has not given her the okay or the the right, so to speak, the legal right, mm-hmm. but she's been given the ability to choose, mm-hmm. and and just because um, she has that ability to choose does not mean God is okay with what she right. chooses. Right, um, and as much as we want, uh, you, one of the things that we that we struggle with as sidewalk counselors, and and I'm sure people in pregnancy centers. My wife works in in a couple of pregnancy centers and, and deals with this same thing. And anybody, I think, who, who deals with the issue of abortion, where we sort of blame ourselves and we didn't say things just right, right. and we didn't yeah. do just yeah. the right thing or, or whatever it might be. And it's like, you know, you just can't say everything just right. And you yeah. never know exactly what to say. And you, you never know exactly what's going to change this mom's mind. And, and you could even say those things exactly right and, and just the right time and just the right amount of, of, of focusing on whatever point. And she could still choose to go That's through right. with an abortion. Because ultimately it's a spiritual battle. Yeah. Ultimately it is a battle between the spiritual forces of good versus evil. Yeah. And, and and we give ourselves, I think, too much credit and too much blame yeah. sometimes. And, you know, we don't save a soul. Right, it, yeah. It's God who saves and God who changes their heart. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a verse that um, that I think has helped me, Second Corinthians 4.4. 4. In their case, the God of this world, being Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So if they can't even see the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, how do they see the the sacred value of that baby made in the image of God? Um, they have been blinded. Yeah. And, and those scales from their eyes can be removed, and we see it all the time. It, yeah. it does happen, but sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, and, 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 and why? Who knows? Who knows why some people's hearts are, are softened and some people's are, right. are not. But we do know that God's Word is alive and active and mm-hmm. sharpening the two-edged sword. That's why we don't neglect to share the truth of, of God's Word right. when we're ministering. Um, well, let's wrap up with this last point. Okay. Um, because I think it is an important point. And uh, bickering, backstabbing, and infighting within pro-life groups, so that, that can be a point of discouragement. Which, yeah. You know, you look on Facebook and you see people, not just in pro-life stuff, but just Christians in general, just, I mean, throwing, <laughs> lobbing grenades at each other and, and, and just just being sort of nasty and all yeah. of that. And there's a lot of backstabbing, a lot of, 
I mean, I think probably some of it comes to like uh, competition and competition over donors or or whatever it might be. My yeah. ministry is better than your ministry. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. that kind of stuff is just yeah. carnal and it dishonors the Lord. Right. But it can be a point of discouragement, mm-hmm. and you know, to deal with that is a uh, is a difficult thing because yeah, you're is. dealing with individuals, you're dealing with people who have their opinions and strong mm-hmm. opinions. Mm-hmm. You know, we did a podcast uh, months ago about. The abolitionist movement and pro life, and, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of sort of back and forth there. You should be an abolitionist. Oh no, the pro life way is the way to go. Yeah. And it's like, man, yeah. you get caught up in all those titles and all those, yeah. you know, whatever catchphrases, mm-hmm. and it just really can bog you down. It can. And, uh, you know, one of the things is, I think, that we need to understand in pro life ministry is that really this is not. It's not pro-life ministry. It's gospel ministry. It's Mm -hmm. about the kingdom of God. It's about advancing the kingdom of God, glorifying Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. and proclaiming His gospel. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, hence the gospel-centered pro-life podcast. Yeah, we we've got to focus on that point, and that's a point that we can all agree on. The gospel needs to go forth, and the gospel is the hope for the abortion-minded woman. Right, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, if we neglect that, then we neglect the most important thing. Exactly. So, and you know, unity in the um, in the non essentials. Wait, how does that go? <laughs> so, 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 so it's uh, unity if in the essentials. Unity in the in whatever the, word in they the non essentials. Grace. Grace. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or charity. Charity. I think you said Charity's it, the exactly. Word. Right, in a, right. in a, in everything that. That is critical to the salvation. You know, the, those things we maybe need to have discussions with, yeah. with others. If we truly believe they are, you know, taking someone and, and sending them on the path to hell, yeah, we probably yeah. need to have some disagreement and some discussion. Yeah, definitely. But most of, I would have to say, most of the bickering and the stuff that goes on are not over the essentials. Yeah. It's really over those side issues that they may be important, but they're not critical. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I think um, a helpful thing with this bickering, backstabbing, and infighting stuff, not to be discouraged by it, um, don't be part of it. <laughs> you know, exactly. don't get in the yeah. mix. You know, and I see, yeah. I, I'm so tempted because I like to debate. I like to go back and forth. And so when I see these Facebook posts where people are going back and forth or whatever. Yeah. I want so bad to jump in there, right. but yeah. I resist the temptation because yeah. I know it's a distraction. It'll get me caught up. And my mind will be thinking about how to make a better argument than that person. And it's like, it ultimately leads to almost nothing. Now there are some right. constructive conversations mm-hmm. that I've seen. I've seen them done in a constructive way. And 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 I think that's good, and we have those conversations and respectful, a yeah. respectful way instead of saying I'm right and you're wrong, but, yeah, but yeah. to respectfully hear what yeah. it, what it, the one of the things that is. I think that social media does, and you know, there's a lot of people that that talk about this. There's even secular psychologists that talk about this point, but social media and and just conversing with people over the internet disconnects us from that face-to-face accountability. Like if I'm talking to you face-to-face and I oppose the things that you believe or whatever, I'm going to talk differently if I'm not seeing you face to face because I can get away with whatever. I can say whatever. I have that sort of anonymity. I guess. You don't see me crying. Yeah, I don't see you, you crying. <laughs> yeah. I don't see your, your facial expressions. Mm-hmm. And I can sort of hide behind my keyboard. Yeah. That's easy to do. Just tap yeah. out something. And, and of course, you, you've got multiple hours to think about what you're exactly how you're going to type it out and all that. When you're having a face to face conversation, there's a little bit of, of a different um way that that plays out and and there's a little more accountability from you to me as we're talking and i get the sense that you're a human being like i am you know when you're on the the internet and you're on social media it's like you're disconnected that's not really a person that's a computer that i'm talking to you sort of get that notion yeah and i think people do say things over social media that they would never say to your face. Yeah. And and that's that's unfortunate. We should yeah. be a person of integrity is a person who is going to be the same behind their keyboard and face to face. Yeah. And yeah. We should strive to be like that. Ephesians four three, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Yeah. So I think there's lots of scripture yeah. that speaks to the need for brethren, Christians to to be unified. Yeah. In um and peaceful. And peace loving, uh, yeah, and promoting peace in, in relationships with each other. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Paul gives us 
this is a scripture I use a lot. Probably mm-hmm. use it on other podcasts mm-hmm. where he's must uh, be an oldie it, but goodie then, huh? <laughs> it, it's an oldie but goodie. <laughs> um, but this is Second Timothy chapter two verse twenty four. Mm-hmm. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, mm-hmm. in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. So there's certainly we we should correct people who are in opposition, but in humility doing yeah. it. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth, that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So if we yeah. want to address people that are in opposition, people yeah. who we believe are wrong, we need to do it in humility. Yeah. And God can grant them repentance. But if we're just going to try to try to cram it down their throat and we're right and you're wrong, um, typically doesn't go so well. And it dishonors yeah. the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, that's above all things, winning an argument is, is far less important than mm-hmm. honoring the Lord. Mm-hmm. We want to honor Jesus because mm-hmm. on your social media, on your whatever, brown, whatever internet source that you're using to converse with people, mm-hmm. there are other people who are looking too. There are pro-choice people mm-hmm. that are looking and seeing the end fighting and all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it ultimately can, can dishonor the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we hope that this was an encouragement to you guys. I hope we answered some of the discouraging uh, the sources of discouragement that you guys have. If you have other subjects or things like that you want us to touch on, you can certainly get in touch with me, dparks at citiesforlife.com or vcasiorg at citiesforlife.com for Vicky. Um, you can connect with us um, on Facebook or Charlotte Cities for Life page. You can always send us a message that way. Mm-hmm. Um, you can connect with us again on uh, by, by email. Um, and also, we do mention often our Sidewalks for Life site, Sidewalks, the number four, and life.com, which is a website that we set up to help encourage people to do sidewalk counseling and, and just give you some tools to, to get trained to do sidewalk counseling. Um, but we appreciate all those who listen, and, and we do want to hear your feedback. If you have time to just send us over an email and let us know what you think of the podcast and some things that we can improve, we'd love to hear from you on that on that area. And we won't be discouraged. We'll be encouraged that you're actually mm-hmm. listening. Yep. Um, but we appreciate you and hope that you're blessed. Give me an outlet for gratitude I know it will cost me my life Nothing's too precious since I met you